This is probably one of, if not the most famous pictures of the 20th century. Even its name, Bursts of Joy, makes you smile just saying the name. And this indeed is a picture worthy of a thousand if not a million words. Everyone in the photo appears to be, well, bursting with joy as a father and husband return home to the U.S. on March 17, 1973 from a North Vietnam POW camp to his family who surely missed him and at times didn't even know he was still alive. But while the entire world looks at this picture and sees nothing but sheer joy and happiness, what if I told you the picture you thought your entire life was a joyous one was anything but? So get ready to unlearn everything you thought you knew about the picture called the burst of joy because i'm going to tell you the gut-wrenching true story behind the most joyous photo ever taken and tell you why it was all a sad and heartbreaking lie next on maximus it was march 17 1973 it had been six long years since she had last seen her father, Lieutenant Colonel Robert L. Strim, an Air Force fighter pilot who had been shot down over Hanoi in 1967 and had been listed as missing only to be found in a Vietnam POW camp where he languished with another POW in that rat-infested cell next to him, a future Senator John McCain. But that's a story for another day. Sitting in the back seat of a government-issued station wagon on the tarmac at California's Travis Air Force Base, wearing her favorite fuchsia miniskirt, 15-year-old Lori Strim felt as if she was having a dream. She simply couldn't fathom she was finally going to be reunited with her father, who she last saw when she was only 9 years old and was captured when she was an 11-year-old girl. Now the anxious young woman waited while her father stood in front of a euphoric crowd, making a brief speech on behalf of himself and other POWs including John McCain, who had arrived from Vietnam as part of the United States Operation Homecoming on that 1973 St. Patrick's Day. Yet minutes cruelly crept by as if they were hours, she recalled. Then suddenly she could stand it no longer, and all at once she flung the car door open and Lori flashed out of that station wagon like a bolt of lightning. Lori would later say, I just wanted to get to dad as fast as I could. So she sprinted down the runway toward him with her arms open, almost appearing to levitate and float off the ground the closer she got to her father. Her mother Loretta and three younger siblings, Robert Jr., Roger, and Cindy, were only feet behind trying to catch up to her lightning speed. We didn't know if he would ever come home, Lori said. At that moment all our prayers were answered and all our wishes had come true, she exclaimed. But while the streaking Strim family only had eyes for their father, they were unaware that they caught the eye of an associated press photographer named Salva Salvetter, who'd been standing in a crowded media pool with dozens of other journalists when he noticed the sprinting joyous family and instinctively started snapping pictures. Salvetter, then 46 years old, said, You could feel the energy and raw motion in the air. Vetter and Vietnam were very much intertwined because Sal had spent much of the Vietnam era covering anti-war demonstrations in San Francisco and Berkeley. Vetter recalled that St. Patrick's Homecoming Day in 1973 was overcast, meaning there was no shadows and near perfect light. So he rushed to a makeshift dark room in a ladies' bathroom on the base. He said he had to use the ladies' room because the UPI, the United Press International, had already commandeered the men's room. But in less than half an hour, Vetter and his AP colleague Walt Zabosky had developed six remarkable images of that singular moment. Vetter's pick, which he instantly titled Burst of Joy, was sent out over the state wire services and published in newspapers around the world, and as a result, Burst of Joy went on to win a Pulitzer Prize for photography in 1974. As Caroline Kleiner Butler put it in the 2005 Smithsonian article, it remains the quintessential homecoming photograph of the time. Strim, 39, who had endured gunshot wounds, torture, illness, starvation, and despair in a North Vietnamese prison camp, including the infamous Hanoi Hilton, is pictured in a new crisp uniform. 
However, due to the fact that Lieutenant Colonel Strim's back is turned to the camera, Vetter pointed out that Strim seemed almost anonymous, even an afterthought at that moment of joy. However, the image of Strim's back to the camera would prove metaphoric, as Strim had suddenly become not just one man, but an American Armed Forces Everyman, who represented not only the hundreds of POWs released that spring day, but all the troops in Vietnam who would return home to their mothers, fathers, wives, daughters, and sons they'd left behind. Donald Goldstein, a retired Air Force lieutenant colonel and co-author of the Vietnam War set of the prize-winning photo, it's a hero's welcome for guys who weren't always seen or treated as heroes. He noted of the photograph of the Strim family reunion, After years of fighting a war we couldn't win, a war that tore us apart, it was finally over, and the country could finally start healing. And while the country may have begun to heal, Lieutenant Colonel Robert Strim's true misery was just about to begin. Because there was more to the story than was captured on film that day. Much more. In 1993, Robert Strim gave an interview to the Roanoke Times, at that time more than 20 years on from that 1973 homecoming. All the ghosts, pain, and misery that had been hidden behind a thin veneer of printed cellulose of a historic Pulitzer Prize winning photo would finally come bleeding through. In 1993 in his suburban San Francisco home, a Vietnam history book on his coffee table was open to that page of Strim's life. Strim, 60 years old at the time, just gazed at the picture. Then after a moment of quiet contemplation, Strim says, I have several copies of that photo, but I don't display them in the house anywhere. Then when asked why, Strim chuckled out loud, pointing to the picture, to the tall woman as he described her. He was pointing to his wife, outrunning her youngest son, dressed in a blue and white pleated skirt and blue sweater, sporting a large corsage. That's why, he said, because of her. Strim's anger and bitterness two decades later were still palpable and directed more at the tall woman in the famous black and white photo, his former wife Loretta, than the Vietnamese captors who tortured him within an inch of his life. Strim said he survived the torture, the mock executions, and the dread-filled days and nights so he could return to her, only to be handed a Dear John letter by a chaplain upon his release literally days before returning home. You see, because three days before he arrived back home to freedom in the United States, the same day he was released from captivity, Strim received a Dear John letter from his wife Loretta, the tall woman in the photo, informing him that their marriage was over. Worse, Strim later would learn that Loretta had been with other men throughout his captivity and had received marriage proposals from three of them. So while the bursts of joy on the face of Robert Strim's children were indeed real, with a love and a joy only children can feel for a father who they believed at one time was dead. However, the smug look of happiness on the face of the tall woman, as he put it, his wife Loretta, was just a facade. Something you might see today on the face of some wannabe influencers on TikTok and Instagram. So then why did Loretta even show up to greet him? because she hid all her affairs and deceit from her children, so she needed to keep the mirage going. Loretta's letter to Robert read in part, I have changed drastically, forced into a situation where I finally had to grow up. Bob, I feel sure that in your heart you know we can't make it together, and it doesn't make sense to be unhappy when you can do something about it. Life is too short, she said. But to Strim, it's the cruel irony that so public a reunion had such a hollow core. The Sal Vetter photo brought a lot of notoriety and publicity to me, Bob said. And unfortunately, the legal situation I was about to be faced with, it was kind of unwelcomed. I'll get to that legal situation a little bit later. In some ways, it's hypocritical, Strim said, because my former wife had abandoned the marriage within a year or so after I was shot down. And she didn't even have the honor and integrity to be honest with the kids. She lived the lie. This picture doesn't show the reality that she had accepted proposals of marriage from three different men. It portrays everybody there as happy to see me. 
But for Strim's older daughter, Lori, the photo captures a wonderful, real, pure moment in time. It brought basket after basket of fan mail and newspaper clippings from all over the world, Lori recalls. She said it was like Christmas. You knew Christmas was going to be great, but you didn't really know what was going to happen on Christmas Day. And that was just like when Dad came home. It was Christmas morning. You were racing down the stairs because we knew that there was a great present waiting for us. Everybody's face is genuinely happy, Lori recalled. Well, that was true for the children, but not for his wife. No one is sure why his wife Loretta even showed up at Travis Air Force Base in California that homecoming day, but she alluded to it in her Dear John letter. In the letter she wrote, I love you. We all love you, but you must remember how very unhappy we were together, she said. It wasn't your fault we are extremely unsuited and managed to make each other miserable. I can't begin to tell you how proud we are of you. She said the children and I never missed a night saying a prayer for your safe return. I have your pictures up and your certificates and have kept you very, very much with us while you were gone and the children have not forgotten their father. I would like to see you when you come home, but I understand if you would rather not. Bob and Loretta met at a party just after he graduated from the Air Force Cadet School. They were married in 1955 when she was 19. They divorced a year after he returned from Vietnam and each remarried within six months. Daughter Lori said her mom had a rough job raising four children of her own. She was very young. In the divorce, Bob Strim was awarded custody of Lori and Robert Jr. Loretta was given custody of Roger and Cindy. But here's the kicker that I'm sure must really hurt Bob Strim and the financial problem he alluded to earlier. His unfaithful ex-wife also received the home and 42.9% of Strim's retirement pay. Though the judge said a great deal of evidence showed a pattern of misconduct on her part during Strim's imprisonment. It's not fair, it's just not, Strim said in the 1993 interview. I'm the one that lives with all the aches and pains from my imprisonment, but she continues to get paid. Robert Strum retired from the Air Force in 1977 after 25 years of service. And of that historic picture, Bursts of Joy, Bob said though it revives the pain, it is inevitable that he sees the picture again from time to time. And finally he said, the momentum to stay alive for my family's sake was very strong because I had four neat children. And then quietly he said what I believed to be a neat wife that I wanted to get back to see. That was a strong incentive, he said. As far as I know, Bob Strim is still alive today at 90 years old. I couldn't find anything of an obituary on him. So if some of you know that he had passed, let me know in the comments below. Okay, look, I get it. Marriages are complicated. Trust me, I know. I've had three of them. And maybe the marriage was rocky from the start, and maybe it wasn't. But does that justify the way Loretta went about her life while her husband was a prisoner of war? I'll leave that up to you to decide. Should Bob Strim's wife had had the decency to wait until he returned, or do you think the Dear John letter was the right thing to do? So please let me know down below. Well, likes are always the best way to get our videos into the YouTube algorithm. So if you enjoyed the video, please remember to give it a like. And also don't forget to subscribe, share, and ring the bell. And remember, leave the rubber on the runway, and your troubles on the ground. And I will see you next time. In the air. Yeah. This is Maximus.